Welcome back to the Introduction to Animation Notes tutorial series. If you came here directly, you might want to start at the beginning. All the info and links are in the video description below. In this video, we will start animating things based on the frame number. Okay, so this is the scene from uh, the last video. We have the sine wave, we have the cosine wave going this way. We have the monkey and the fall off uh, of, with the object controller fall off. Now let's maybe get rid of this whole monkey thing and start animating stuff. Okay, so we just have this. We don't want to change the rotation. Now we have this. Now let's make those waves move like waves. How can we do that? So it's just a little bit of math, right? We have the X location of each tile. We have this factor here. And then we use the sign, we have the custom fall off. It looks quite complicated, but in fact, it's just a lot of nodes and uh, noodles for very simple things, actually. The only thing we really have to do now to offset our sign curve is by adding something, some factor, some offset value to our X location. And you can see when I animate this, we have the waves going. Okay, set this back to zero. Let's do the same thing going uh, this way. So we, the wave is going this way for the cosine on this axis here. Whoops. Okay, let's clean this up a little. And now I want to animate this offset, right? I don't want to use my mouse here. I actually want something to happen when I hit play. And we can do that by simply hitting Shift A, animation, time info. How about we plug the time info in here and in here for our offset and then hit play. And that's it. We're animating something. <laughs> in this case, we're animating the X and Y offset for our sine and cosine. Cool. Now, if we wanted to make it faster or slower, we could add more math nodes, number, math. Maybe for the x, we want to multiply it by 0.5 so that we're slowing down this wave, going this way. Maybe we want to speed up the one going on the y. So let's multiply that by two. Okay. So now we have a slow wave going this way, but this one is actually going pretty fast. And that's what it looks like. So all we really need to animate stuff is this time info node, which gives us the current frame number. If I plug a viewer in here, I will look at this. This is just the frame number down here, you can see. Okay, and spacebar just plays the animation or pauses the animation. So that's a very useful uh, hotkey. You don't have to go down here with the mouse. Okay, now I want, while this animation is going, I want this monkey thing back that I had in the last video where I'm changing the rotation of each tile. So when I look at this uh, node tree here, I can tell that I'm just working on vectors, right? I'm offsetting vectors use, using this math and the fall off, and then I'm doing an object transform output. Remember a matrix, which actually we have here, distribute matrices, a matrix contains location, rotation, and scale. So how about we try and uh, make this whole node tree here uh, into a new node tree that uses the matrices. Hmm, so instead of offset vector, we are gonna need a matrix offset matrix, right? So we have the matrices that gives us the grid. And then we want to offset the location on the C1. So this is basically the same that what I just had, except that I'm now using a offset matrix node. So instead of this offset vector, I'm also going to duplicate offset matrix. Plug that in here, plug the falloff in here. Again, location one. 
And then the object transform output, I can delete that too. I'm going to need an object matrix output. So all of these objects need to be transformed to these matrices. Now everything is still the same, but it's based on matrices now. And the animation still works, of course, because we didn't change anything down here in our sine and cosine calculations. Now we have matrices. Um, we're, def we're creating matrices here, and then we're actually transforming these tiles to those new locations. Okay, well, that was pretty easy. Now, how about the monkey? Let's get the monkey in here. And let's get our object, where is it? Fall off object controller. Take the monkey, increase the fall off width. And then again, do another offset matrix. In this time, we don't want to change the location. We want to change the rotation. Maybe on the Y 180 degrees using this monkey controller fall off with a bigger fall off width. And then, I don't know, exponential. That looks kind of cool. So I can hit play. And while it's playing, I can move the monkey and changing the fall off of the rotation. If I move far away, I don't have the rotation. Okay, this is cool. And this is all working because this is a set to always. If I switch that off and I move the monkey, it still works because we're changing the frame number, frame change. It doesn't work if I'm not uh, playing the animation, of course. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so if we wanted this uh, kind of effect, but we don't want this monkey, we can delete the monkey. We can add an empty, maybe take an empty sphere. Okay. And then use the sphere instead of Suzanne in here. So this empty now and to set the fall off width to one. So now if I'm moving the empty, nothing's happening. The fall off width isn't uh, big enough. And in fact, I actually want the fall off to be the size of the empty. So how about we take an object input, take the empty, plug that in here and take an op check transform input of that empty and put the scale in there which is going to plug a separate vector node in for me right the scale is xyz the fall off with here is just a single float so i'm taking the x in this case for the size and now if i hit play and i scale up my sphere The sphere size and the sphere location, of course, is influencing the rotation because that's what I'm influencing here with the last offset matrix. Okay, so I can scale and move my empty to get this effect. Okay, now just for fun, let's try another fall off type. Here we're using the sphere. Let's unplug that. I leave that in here, but I'm going to take another fall off type. I'm going to take the delay fall off type because that's a cool one too. What happens if I plug the delay fall off type in here and I can hide the empty because I'm not using it at the moment. And I'm going to go back and just simply hit play. Oh no, I'm missing something. I'm missing the time. The delay fall off node needs the time information, which I already have here. So let's plug that in there. Now what happens? Look at this. We get the sine and cosine. In fact, to see what this is actually doing, I'm going to switch this to zero and this to zero and go back and hit play. Now look at this. 
This is just one node, the delay falloff node, and it goes through all of the objects in order of its, you know, object index or creation, basically, and rotates the tiles around 180 degrees on the y-axis. That's what the delay falloff node does, and it comes with a few settings. Again, we have linear or maybe exponential, so that they start off fast and then and then end the rotation ends slowly like this, or we can start slow, rotate fast, and end slow with these buttons here. There's a delay of five frames between each tile, and the whole rotation takes uh, 20 frames. So if I set the delay to one, then we get this kind of effect. Okay. If I increase this to 50 frames, then the rotation takes longer. Or if I set it to 10, then they rotate faster. And this is all just one delay falloff node. Very cool node. I'm not doing any of this other stuff. I'm just doing this at the moment. But again, we can add stuff on top of each other. For example, if we still want our sine wave happening here, maybe with a low amplitude, and maybe this one as well. This is a bit fast here. So let's set this 2.5. Okay, changing the speed of my sine and cosine offset. And then on top of all of that wavy thing, we have the delay falloff node. And of course, we can not only change the rotation with this delay falloff, we could also change the location. So maybe on top of all of our waves going on, we want to make the tiles fly up while they're rotating. And then we get this just by playing with these nodes and with some math we can get very very cool effects all within animation nodes we're not doing anything in blender basically we're just doing we're creating objects here we're getting information from these objects we're calculating stuff based on in this case the location of these objects and then we're calculating new positions and new rotations, and then we're assigning these positions and rotations to the objects we created in animation nodes. This is all animation nodes. The objects are in here, and they're real objects with real locations, rotation scales. And again, if I go to my plane here, my, my center tile, where is it? Somewhere there, let's hide this. And if I added a bevel modifier after the solidify and change the offset to get something like a tile, I have to enable copy full object here. Then they all have the bevel modifier. I can hide my original plane. Hide the overlays. And then we get this. So my animation is 250 frames long. And when you think about it, we have 20 by 20, so 400 tiles. And the delay uh, fall off note here, each rotation takes 10 frames. And we have a delay of one frame. So you can do the math uh, in 250 frames of my animation we're not uh, getting done here with the delay. That's why not all of them are flipping around. We can change, of course, the duration. Maybe set that down to five. Ah, no, the duration doesn't the duration doesn't matter here. We can set the delay down to 0.5. And then we get a faster animation here. And we're actually rotating them all and flipping them up on the C axis because that's what this offset matrix here is doing changing location and rotation based on the delay falloff okay let me plug that back in here where we're using the empty 
Now the empty is, where is the empty? Here, now the empty is influencing the rotation and in this case, our shift on the C-axis, right? Now, when I look at this, I'm thinking, hmm, what if I shift this down minus three so that I'm getting some sort of an indentation without the rotation hmm couldn't i make something where i'm indenting you know not moving tiles but actually indenting a mesh and well of course we can and we're gonna do that in the next episode i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions write a comment below don't forget to like and subscribe. You can download the blend file of this and many other tutorials from patreon.com slash crispy. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode. Crispy out.